Hey guys, welcome back to Bible q in it. This is the third video of the Prayer 101 series. Today we're answering the question, how should we pray? There are some basic guidelines that we should follow when praying to our Heavenly Father. These are similar to the protocols we follow when appearing before a judge. You have to say your honor every time you're addressing them. And you have to show respect in the way you speak and position yourself. In this video, we will be talking about some simple things we should do to show respect to our Heavenly Father. The first thing is to not close our eyes. Why exactly? Well, think of it this way. Imagine a son who wants to ask his father something. He closes his eyes, walks up to his father, and asks, Can you help me with this and that? The first thing that will come out of the father's mouth is, Why are you closing your eyes? Is something wrong with them? Now apply that same logic to God. Just as how we won't close our eyes when asking our Father something, we shouldn't close our eyes when talking to God, our Heavenly Father. Just because God is a spirit and not a human, according to John chapter 4, verse 24, doesn't mean that such respect or etiquette isn't important. Another thing we should remember when praying to God is to not shout. Shouting when talking to God is disrespectful. If you're in a court and you raise your voice at a judge, you have become disrespectful. To show respect, you remain calm and composed and speak to them normally. The same goes for God. In fact, it is simply unnecessary to do it because God isn't going to hear you more if you shout than if you whisper. Hannah prayed in her heart in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verses 10 to 13 and God heard it loud and clear. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 23 to 24, God made it clear that He's far and near at the same time. Distance, therefore, is meaningless to Him. Because of this, we don't need to raise our voices in order for God to hear us. Number three, our prayer should not be long. It isn't good to repeat ourselves when praying to God because it suggests that God cannot hear us or worse, He doesn't have the capacity to hear us. Why do I say that? Well, in 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 24 to 29, we see that Elijah and the prophets of Baal were in a competition, sort of, to prove which God was real. The prophets of Baal kept on repeating themselves, asking for their God to hear them. He never answered them, though. Elijah watched it for a few hours and began to mock them by saying, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth, and must be awakened. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 27 Our God, on the other hand, does not slumber or sleep. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Psalm chapter 121 verse 4 Therefore, it's useless to make long prayers. Based on this, Jesus Christ advised us to not make long repetitive prayers in Matthew chapter 6 verses 7 and 8. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be ye not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. We should always remember that when we are praying to God, we have to speak respectfully. We can't just say whatever we want before our Creator, because He is our God, and should be respected as such. King Solomon talked about this in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 2. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. Also, we should be specific when praying to God. For example, if we're asking God for forgiveness, we shouldn't just tell God, God, I know I sinned, and whatever sins I've committed, forgive me of them. That's insincerity, because we aren't really showing that we are sorry for what we've done. When we want forgiveness from God, we should mention the specific offenses we have committed. If we look at Daniel's prayer in Daniel chapter 9, verses 13 to 19, we'll notice that Daniel mentioned the specific sins that Israel committed, how they forsook the laws of God and ignore the saying of his prophets. Lastly, there are different positions we can take when we want to pray to God. 
For example, we can stand. If we read Luke chapter 18, verses 11 and 13, we can bow, as Abraham's chief servant did in Genesis chapter 24, verses 26, 48, and 52. We can also kneel, as Solomon did in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 54, and as Daniel did in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Now, it's great if we follow these guidelines. However, we should know that these guidelines are for us, not for God. Because God is too big to gain anything from whether we respect Him in prayer or not. Job 1 said, If thou sinnest, what doest thou against Him? Or if thy transgressions be multiplied, what doest thou unto Him? If thou be righteous, what givest thou Him? Or what receiveth He of thine hand? It's just like fasting. We don't fast for God. We fast for ourselves, as it allows us to focus on the things of God and not be distracted. And that's the end of this episode of Prayer 101. In the next video of this series, we will talk about what we should say when praying to God to show respect to His name. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when we come out with the next video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.